here as we prepare the shoulder of the filet for sashimi, any extra imperfections will be removed. There's three different types of cuts that we're going to go over here. The first one is the most traditional. This is a straight pull sashimi block cut. This is a cut you'll see on any big fish that will allow you to have a filet of the right size in order to create this cut. This is a drawn or pulling slice, also for sashimi presentation. This longer drawn out slice gives more surface area, a lighter mouthfeel, a thinner texture. You have sliced open more of the individual proteins of this flesh, and so it will allow you to have a more flavorful bite. The final cut here we're doing is one that is usually for whitefish, for very thin halibut, for thin Thai snappers, for breams. We're going to slice that eye right in half and we're going to scalp this filet down into a lower profile so when we go in to do a very paper thin slice, we have a little less surface area and we have a little tighter flesh that will allow us to create a thin, more perfect slice. Here I've taken those slices and shingled them on the cutting board and have rolled them into a rose, which is a traditional sushi preparation. Seeing the way the grain of the flesh is running will tell you where and how to cut, and you always want to cut against the grain. If you cut with the grain, the flesh will unfold and will ripple against your knife. If you're cutting against the grain, it has a surface tension that will withstand the entry of the blade and the cutting edge into the flesh, so it will create a perfect cut and not a mangled cut along the belly of the filet. This segment closest to the stomach is the toro of the hiramasa, or the absolute pure and fattest